Meanwhile, there's growing concern that other Australian athletes will follow. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And you could have watched that guy all night, couldn't you? In fact, let's go back to see how he's doing. Yes, as you can see, the ABC gremlins have been playing their tricks again. And once again, it's Media Hub, the new whiz-bang facility that sends ABC programs around the country that is to blame. Launched on ABC One in June this year, Media Hub went to pieces during the coverage of the famous coup against then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, giving us freeze frames and rewinds around Australia as the new automated system struggled to cope with fast-breaking news. Since then, we've seen stuff-ups on a regular basis, climaxing in total meltdown on 19th of October when programmes in all but two states froze up. In Hobart, ABC viewers got this for 20 minutes. In Perth, this for 20 minutes, and in Adelaide, this for half an hour. This latest disaster occurred because Media Hub's computers crashed at 4pm Eastern Daylight Saving Time, and the backup failed to kick in. This was catastrophic because Media Hub is essentially a computer system, which switches programs with a giant router, which also went down. Now, luckily, ABC Sydney still runs a ghost feed of ABC One through an old manual presentation booth. And when Media Hub crashed, this could be put to air instead. But the backup feed was only ABC One Sydney. So some states ended up watching the New South Wales news late afternoon. And because of technical difficulties, the ABC One schedule will continue to be disrupted in some states this evening, but you will get local news at the usual time. In Perth, Angry toddlers expecting cartoons had to watch a whale documentary instead. And before long, the ABC switchboard was besieged with complaints. Mainly mothers upset. Children who were throwing tantrums because usual programs not on. As ABC Master Control tried valiantly to fill the gaps, some of what went to air naturally had mistakes, like this in South Australia. In the Adelaide Hills, about 400 asylum seekers in family groups. Bracky in the Adelaide Hills, about 400 asylum seekers in family groups. Bracky in the Adelaide Hills, about 400 asylum seekers in family groups. Bracky in the Adelaide Hills, about 400. Transition into a viable, sustainable industry is better than the future that they're facing at the moment. Just like Groundhog Day. Meanwhile, on ABC2, programs died for 50 minutes until they could be breathed to life through another old booth in Sydney. And later they died again, leaving viewers watching this for 15 minutes. ABC switch and message boards now also melted down, with 536 complaints about what was happening to the schedule. The next day, ABC Online explained to frustrated viewers... Due to technical difficulties, ABC TV experienced transmission disruptions to the schedules on ABC One... ABC2 and ABC3 last night. As a result, many popular programs, including Criminal Justice on ABC2, did not go to air. So what are we to make of this latest calamity? Well, were it just an isolated example, we could probably say it's only teething problems. But this new ABC baby has had plenty of time to cut its teeth, and the pain continues. On ABC News 24 recently, a report on Indian cricket was suddenly hijacked by a promo for the drum and a series of other random pictures culminating in this. And we do apologise for some break-up in the programming there, Virginia, um, during the sports uh, headlines. It wasn't my fault. There were some technical problems. Uh, I'm just very, very glad that the Chilean miners are not being rescued by us. According to an email to ABC staff back in June 2009, Media Hub was supposed to... ..greatly improve on-air presentation performance. It was also going to allow the ABC to provide rapid response for live, local or national news or emergency coverage. And best of all, it was going to do this while releasing more resources for ABC content production. Indeed, big savings on staff costs from Media Hub and Studio Automation are intended to fund News24. And despite all the problems, the ABC's Chief Operating Officer says he is satisfied with progress, claiming Media Hub has... 
significantly improved on-air performance, even taking into account the problems that occurred on 19th of October. And that's despite... A 200% increase in the volume of content served and a 500% increase in the switching required. But one Media Hub insider disagrees, claiming he's seen five to ten years of mistakes in just five months. So, is anyone being disciplined? Has anyone been sacked? Answer, no and no. Partly because this is mostly happening outside the ABC. Media Hub is a private joint venture with commercial broadcaster Win TV, And partly because it's the software that's chiefly to blame. At the heart of Media Hub is a new British playout system called Morpheus, which is also being used in Australia by Prime TV. And according to an insider, it all works fine until you make changes. You might want to change from a news break to the program. It might get stuck on the news studio and then go to black. Sometimes it just won't go to an ad break. Or it might cut out of an ad break. It's not uncommon for the software to freak out if you make too many changes to the schedule. It will lock up and the system will crash. We've received identical comments from former employees at Media Hub. And that's not great for a TV station that deals with live or breaking news like the ABC. So, can it be made to work? Well, probably. How long will it take? Who knows? Our Prime TV source merely says... Morpheus will one day be fantastic. The current version is not ready for prime time. The ABC's Media Hub partner, Wynn, also suffered in the October meltdown, though not so badly. And it's experienced similar teething problems, like a current affair popping up in place of the news. With rock bottom prices. Predict mortgage stress will hit hardest in our capital cities. Wins also had the ads failing to show up for Kerry Ann Kennelly, with a black screen and then the Win logo for more than six minutes. And most embarrassing of all, three weeks ago, ABC TV jumped in on the end of a current affair for roughly a minute. So far, we haven't had Win on the ABC, thank heavens. But according to our Morpheus informant... All it would take would be a typo for Win to end up on ABC, or vice versa. Wynn's chief executive, John Hatcher, tells Media Watch that all problems so far have been... ...resolved very quickly with little disruption to our viewers. And that everything is... ...running to plan. But yesterday on Channel 9 Adelaide, owned by Wynn, the gremlins struck again during the kids' programmes. But the real test for Wynn is yet to come. Until last week, southern New South Wales and the ACT were the only regions using Media Hub. By January, there'll be around 40 different areas, each broadcasting local ads that need to be separately switched. And if Media Hub's mistakes continue, it could cost Wynn dearly with advertisers. The recent meltdown could also cost the ABC, and not just in reputation. It may need to retain its old manual presentation booths spend money to fix Media Hub's problems and maybe employ someone to watch ABC programmes as they go out. With News24 already stretching resources, this could increase pressure to do more with less. And that worries programme makers. And a short time ago, we even saw the new climate change minister, Greg Combe, turn up in just an ordinary civilian car on the floor of the House that the suspension and the processing of uh, Afghan um, asylum seekers has been lifted. He said that um, uh, up-to-date country information, the government, of course, has spent the last couple of months assessing the situation. You mentioned to Josh that he'd pass it, it to you guys. Yep, sure yeah. did. Sure. It'll happen, mate. Josh doesn't muck around. He's Josh does not muck around. That's too right. I, won't, I won't bother calling him. It'll just be one more thing. I do answer since that email, by the way, you probably haven't received it because you've been down here. But um, oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Let's go live uh, back now to Canberra, and Annabelle Crab is Good there. Annabelle, yeah. Annabelle, yeah, that's, Annabelle that's just uh, flip it around <laughs> clockwise. Uh, you're getting and swept up in the uh, the ceremony and the uh, formalities of things there this morning. Just do that. Turn it yes, clockwise. absolutely, and we're getting this, this new on. format oh, uh, in Parliament House, which is where things evolve on the floor of Parliament House as we watch them. And they're evolving right in front of you there. Indeed. There, there as well. 
So but there's a state of high excitement here, I think it's fair to say, <laughs> Joe. Sure, I mean, sure in this parliament, you don't know who's going to walk anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there's a frenzy of activity there this morning. So to talk us through some of these, uh, some of the details of the job figures released yesterday, uh, I'm joined now by Senator Eric Abetz, who's in our Hobart studio. He's the Opposition oh, Employment and you. Workplace Relations spokesman. Senator, thanks for joining us. Great to be on the program. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Stay with us on ABC News 24. hit by possibly the worst storm in its history. Hurricane Igor has swept past the island, lashing the British territory and causing blackouts in some areas. Gusts of up to 120 kilometres an hour whipped up enormous waves. Boats were wrenched from their moorings and trees smashed. 